Gentlemen, are you ready? I am. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call the East Hempfield Township Traffic Commission to order. Would you please rise and join me in a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Up first on our agenda, we have the uh, traffic report for June. And will that be Ms. Schweitzer or will that be Chief Brubaker? It's really just a review of, of the past month. Um, we may want to just hit on the fact with Lidl and that discussion. So that is now with our traffic engineer. And I've also reached out to Lidl to look at the intersection of good and the low and their entrance. So um, I get to hear back from anybody. It's kind of difficult after two weeks, but it's it's moving along and, and we're back up to speed again. We're hoping for a, a meeting with PennDOT to talk about the access point on Columbia and what could be done there in terms of what PennDOT will allow, which might involve changes to the uh, intersection at Good in Columbia. Okay. So that's moving along. I don't know that there's anything else really. Has, uh, has anything been done there or is it pretty much still the way it had been the, at Lidl? It's the same way it was at, for the construction plans. So the access is in and out. Um, there hasn't been any, any change done. There also has not been any accidents recently. We had a few when they first opened, but there haven't been any in recent months. I did notice that there is, as was said in the meeting, a complete lane that continues up to Roarstown Road. Right. And uh, the only only negative that might be is it doesn't allow acceleration out of those few properties, but I don't know that they need it. There's not a lot of traffic. It looks like that could be a solution. Perry suggested it, and he thought that that would add capacity to that intersection, So, which is a good thing. That's pretty much the way people are going to use it anyway, except for going straight through. They, they might not do that until we make it clearer. Regarding the uh, truck route project, we've got a little bit of progress there. We had a public safety meeting. We reviewed it. We, they authorized us to send that to the traffic engineer for a cost proposal because he has to do the studies that are involved with the, the actual roadways. So. He promised to have that proposal back to me next week, and then we can move forward from that point. Okay. And is his, is that just a preliminary study or, or the proposal is for the? The cost to look at the Northwest. North South. North South corridors for truck traffic. Okay. Gotcha. Any other comments on the traffic report? Mr. Lefebvre? No, thank you. Mr. Weaver? No, I didn't have anything. Okay. <clears throat> Chief, anything you wanted to highlight or? No, not that wasn't already covered. Thank you. Okay. All right, next on our agenda is the action item is uh, minutes from the May 18th traffic commission meeting. Any comments, gentlemen? On. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Lefevre. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Weaver to approve the um, minutes from the May 18th meeting. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Traffic studies. Church Street, Sylvan Road, Lidditz Road, Lancaster Road, Spring Valley Road. The only one that probably warrants some additional discussion is Spring Valley Road. Okay. And what to do on there. There was a slight, very slight decrease when we did the line painting. Um, that's probably not the answer, 
but uh, as I alluded to, you're going to please some people, not please others, depending upon what the, the traffic commission is interested in doing. Um, forgive me, I've not been on Spring Valley Road probably in the last month. Did we, I know we had talked about moving the signage that had the uh, radar. Perry, did we, I know that it was there. It may have been moved to Lidditz Road. We moved one of them to Lidditz and we did reposition the one that's on the east side of um, Spring Valley Road. We did have to move it a little bit because it is um, solar powered and because of the trees, uh, there are a couple places we just couldn't put it. Uh, it needs some direct sunlight and you know on that road there's there's very little of that so <clears throat> but yes we did move one of them over to um, uh, Lidditz Road. Did we narrow the cartway? We did <clears throat> um, along where the curbing was we did not have white lines there before and I believe we moved them in it's at least three if not four feet so it is uniform um double yellow in the middle and we we made the wider stripes also um <clears throat> so the entire length has white lines on the outside and the and the bigger double yellow in the middle so it is narrower uh between the white lines yes okay. i went back to <clears throat> last report was from september 15th 2021 so we started with 55% enforceable violations, but then with the speed bumps, it went down to 6% after they were put in. But then of course, the neighbors, some of the neighbors asked to have them removed or many of the neighbors. And then now we're back up to 30% 30, 30 enforceable violations. So we're not as bad as it was before. So they are doing something but not as good as we did with speed bumps. And maybe people got the message with the speed bumps and have slowed down a little bit. It's hard to get inside people's heads, but it'd be interesting if it goes back up to 55%, then, you know, I guess we know that the narrowing didn't really help. But it seems a little early to say that just yet. might be a good test case for other uh, roads where we have speeding problems. So could we, I guess, could we get, keep an eye on that maybe and just check and continue to check and see if it stays at 30% or if it starts to go up. Yeah, perhaps before the winter, before the fall, late fall, we could maybe check it again and see where it's at. Yeah. We were out yesterday just on a note, uh, we had an NRAD detail yesterday there from about 10.30 to 11.30 and um, most people were in compliance. So yeah. we only had, we had two contacts within that, that hour, which typically in the past has been a, a busy period of time. So marked or unmarked? Marked. We had unmarked running, oh, okay. but marked cars there to, uh, to stop the violators. Yeah. So you in an hour, there was only two enforceable or, okay. Okay, so we will continue to monitor, monitor Spring Valley Road and <clears throat> enforcement as you have uh, the manpower to do so, Chief, on yes, that sir. road. Are there any comments in reference to uh, the traffic study, which included Church Street, Sylvan Road, Lidditz Road, Lancaster Road, Spring Valley Road. And, uh, school school and school alley. alley. Yes. What, where is that and why do we have a wrong way driving problem? Is that near the high school? No, that's in Roarstown proper. It's, uh, it's the only, well, no, it's not the only. It's just past Elizabeth. Mm -hmm going East towards town. Lancaster, and it's the one way off of Marietta. So in the memo, it says that the issue is not speeding, but it's wrong way traffic. Correct, correct. Okay. Hmm. 
the uh, person that complained uh, was concerned about the, I guess she knew there was no speeding, but there's no stop signs either. And it's a straight through shot to um, mayor. And she thought, well, maybe stop signs would be beneficial. The problem with stop signs is this is a very, very <laughs> narrow road. And even putting stop signs, the houses and the garages are right on, on the alleys. So to put a stop sign on some of those intersections, it's not gonna be possible. We did put stop signs on the cross streets uh, that go across school lane. So the alleys which should have stop signs can't and the cross streets. Which... Cross streets are also alleys. Okay. So um, those are a bit easier to get those stop signs in. Um, it, it's just a very difficult road and you can't enforce speed. Well, speed obviously isn't an issue. It's, it's, I think it's the volume of, of cars. We had talked to uh, Roarstown residents probably a year, year and a half ago, maybe two, maybe. regarding concerns about traffic and speed and, and, and cut throughs going through Roarstown. And we looked at it and staff looked at it and we came back with a plan. The Roarstown residents did not support the plan because it involved changing direction of traffic. So then we came back with a second plan, which included the stop signs being put on, on the cross streets uh, to help alleviate some of that. And we also did a cross, cross road or crossing at Mayor to get across to the school because the kids were, were, were walking in that neighborhood. So that helped them get across Mayor. So the, the wrong way traffic is, is that people willfully Going that surprises me. I don't know if you'd okay. stop anyone and ask or um, the wrong way traffic is to primarily avoid the backlog Marietta and Roarstown. Okay. Um, when it backs up during rush hour, the peak volume for this is basically a nine to 6 PM time frame, And it's people trying to avoid as well as in Roarstown, there is a, uh, a business that our gut based on, we, we broke up the the study from Marietta to, I believe it's church and then church to mayor. And there was almost double the amount of traffic going the wrong way on just one block of where the traffic study was done. So our belief is that one of the uh, landscape businesses that's right there in Roarstown might be one of the primary offenders of just kind of going the wrong way based on the double of volume for that one block versus the, the other block. So, but it's primarily just being used as, as a cut through. And uh, the signs were, the dedication of the, the one way was to alleviate what I think was originally thought to be the, the higher of the volume, um, but it's obviously being used by both directions to bypass Marietta and Roarstown. Um, is that, something that we can enforce and should be yes time to time yeah i think we should also uh we can go back and just relook at the signage and make sure between perry and i that the uh the one-way signage is fully visible for all blocks within that street okay to alleviate any any confusion that could be could be there any other comments john Any comments from the audience on those particular streets? Excuse me. Excuse me. You're going to have to come into the microphone. I'm sorry. And your name and address, please, before you speak. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kim Tiedekin, 543 North Long Avenue. It can be. can be. We, we just got that traffic study in today. Uh, but yes, we, we can address that. Yep. Mm -hmm.
So we don't have that one in the packet, correct? You do not, no. Okay. We just got it today. Gotcha. Okay. But I, um, I have Chief Boo Baker can okay. brief you on what it says. So we had the, uh, the Jamar traffic analyzer up on the 1600 block of Wheatland Avenue from June 13th to the 15th. Uh, it's a 25 mile an hour zone. I think as we know, Ms. Lopez has been here the past two meetings to express her, her concerns. Um, volume of vehicles was uh, 1774 within the, the week period of time. A daily average of 255 vehicles were, were recorded. The average speed was 23 miles an hour. The 85th percentile was 29, 29 miles an hour. Uh, making enforceable violations one uh, percent at this point. So um, police have uh, put out our message board with the sl to slow kids at play sign, um, as well as perform the the study at this point. So and monitor it from time to time with unmarked vehicles. So. Let me address that issue. You know, And my daughter, Karen, who came here twice a year. Uh, my daughter had come two previous times. She can't be here today to talk about the issue. And I'm sure you're well aware Wheatland Avenue parallels Columbia and also parallels uh, Ridgeway and Wilson. And I, myself, when she said to come here and speak tonight, I wanted to check out what she was referring to because we babysit our three grandkids on that street. The study sounds incredulous to me from my experience. But anyway, on the lower road, Wilson, there are six stop signs in that 0.8 uh, mile situation. The next road up, Ridgeway, there's four. And then my daughter's street, Wheatland, there are none. So my experience, because we're at House on every Tuesday, is people to bypass Columbia. They don't want to be on Wilson because all stop signs, they don't want to be on Ridgeway. So they go up to the top and they head down. The speed box that you placed, I appreciate it, was placed in a timely fashion, is right at the intersection of Yale and Wheatland, which traditionally where people slow down if they have to turn right or left. So the box placement, I think, misses a lot of the speeders uh, in the area. But the other, Serious concern is in that particular area of Wheatland, there are about 23 young kids. My daughter's very obsessive, so she went around and, and got a petition signed by 38 of the Wheatland community. So I understand the data you have today. I don't know how you use it for your criteria placement of uh, stop signs or speed bumps, but I can just tell you as a citizen being there, a lot of people speed by her house on Wheatland, 1609 Wheatland. So. I'm not sure if you were picking up the actual number of speeding by 1% sounds dramatically low, but nonetheless, uh, certainly it's a concern. And my personal feelings are, and I don't know how you or criteria, how you determine, I assume you put a lot of cred credibility in the traffic box, but you know, a stop sign one or two along that 0.8, uh, you know, mile route would better match what's going on on the two parallel roads below. And I think would really, really slow down a lot of people who use that. You know, nobody wants to be on Columbia Avenue in Russia, right? We've all been there. So they all come up right at, you know, Boas there, whatever it's called now, not Boas, whatever. They, they turn left. And before your speed bump, they haven't, you know, they're going either way. Your speed bump is missing a lot of the speed. And I think where it was placement, I mean, you didn't know that at the time. But my request for the safety of all those children would be you consider, you know, I know speed bumps I've learned through my proofreading, uh, a much more involved placement. I get that, you know, you know there, there are three speed bumps on the one-tenth of Farmingdale, which is curious, but if a stop sign or whatever could be placed, uh, you know, two or three along that route, it would, comp it would stop the people, I think, from coming up to speed down uh, and bypass all the signs on the other two parallel roads. Uh, any questions for me? Because I've not spoken no, here before. No, I think, um, and perhaps, I don't know, Chief, if, if you or if Perry, somebody can speak to There's, We can't just go and place stop signs. No, I understand. So unfortunately, you know, stop signs, while it seems like it would be an easy solution, um, there's certain criteria that has, has to be met. Um, can you delve into that just yeah, real quick? Yeah, let me just pull up. So and you had... Here. 
the second part was the uh, speed bumps. And we found um, that the speed bumps are a double-edged sword. So um, some of the residents want them, some of the residents don't. Um, and before we would even entertain putting them up, we would have to have some data that really shows that, that they're gonna be absolutely necessary and it's the last straw, that there's nothing else that we could do. Um, well, if you don't mind me asking, what are the stop sign criteria? Are they objective? Are they on your website? Because So it, we don't get, unfortunately, we don't make them up. It's from uh, Department of Transportation. So. Yeah, sure. Um, so it's called the MUTCD is the uh, regulating guideline for stop sign placement. Um, so just, I'm going to read verbatim off of the website and the booklets that we have for traffic control. Um, considerations that influence the decision making regarding the appropriate street upon to install a stop sign where two streets with relatively equal volumes or characteristics uh, intersect. Stopping the direction that conflicts the most with established pedestrian crossing activity or walking school zone. So that doesn't necessarily apply here. Uh, stopping the direction that has obscured vision dips bumps that already require a driver to lower their speeds. Stopping the direction that has the longest distance of uninterrupted flow approaching the intersection and stopping the direction that has the best sight distance to conflicting traffic. So I think at this point, the cross streets that, that you're referring to, um, I think Perry, you went out and looked at sight distance, right? Last month or the month before? We did, and, and none of them meet the criteria for a stop sign. You know, unfortunately, with PennDOT and the MUTCD, um, you're not allowed to use stop signs to control speed. Um, as nice as it would be, um, that is just one thing that, that, that is prohibited. Um, but we did look at a lot of the intersections. Um, we really couldn't justify, um, because of the posted speed limit, any, any sight distance problems. And I'm not really sure why the other streets have them. Um, they could have predated a, a lot of these, you know, the MUTCD was updated um, a couple of years ago, but uh, that, that may have predated some of the, you know, some of the criteria uh, back in the day. So, cause those stop signs have been there since probably the seventies. Um, <clears throat> so basically there's no recourse. Well, again, we can we can put it back in the queue if you feel that the um, where the traffic count or study was done wasn't um, good placement. We can take a look at that possibly. Um, you know, we can also put it in the queue for enforcement. But from the data that we have right now, it looks like that's going to bear very little results, if any. Sir, you said 1609 Wheatland? Correct. Is that not a downgrade going well east or upgrade going west to some extent, more so than the rest of Wheatland? Well, downgrade going to, down to the creek, basically. And that's where the-, the so My um, daughter's at the end right before you hit the car. And that's where the monitor was placed. And, and you're thinking it may not have been the best place. And I would right. suggest that because of that downgrade, people may be slowing down a bit naturally. Right. So the speeding may be more of a concern on the more level portion of Wheatland as you approach your area. And then of course, they're yeah. in the process of slowing down naturally, but they're still speeding. Oh, I, I, you know, in my field, the data is, you know, there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. All I'm trying to say is the data may not reflect the actual experience. So I would like if you could place a little further away uh, at another site and get more data, that would be beneficial to us, I think. I'm trying to support your suggestion. Oh, no, I understand entirely. Right. But I'm saying you're saying to place the box further west. west. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we agree. We're green. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I would like maybe that. We could, maybe we could try that. Okay. I said, maybe we could try that. That would be wonderful because at this point, you know, we're walking away with, you know, 23 kids that I feel are still at risk just from my experience being there, not your data box, mm -hmm. uh, because that that's what I would request for another evaluation 
as I said, we appreciate your time to come out, putting the box out. That was wonderful. But the data doesn't agree with my personal experience. I'm there every Tuesday. <laughs> so I am, you know, seeing what's going on. Wondering if you could give me that data again so I could write it down. Sure, sure, sure. Can I can I ask a question real quick as far as placement for so we had it on the 1600 block up near Yale, Yale uh, which is Yale, 16 and so, you so you're asking for it to be more in the 17 or 18 hundred block yeah. versus where your the initial concern is for the 1600 just so I'm clear well, you think that the data would would be better to substantiate right more a block or two from where your daughter lives right. is that correct okay that would be great okay well I appreciate your time thank you kindly sure. we, we can email that information to you did you write your email down okay we can email it to you okay we'll get it to you, you bet Okay. Any other comments? Uh, moving on to old business. Any old business to address? Seeing none. Any new business? Okay. Any public comments uh, for the non agenda items from the audience? Yes. Just Mary Shields, 3004 Gloucester Street. <laughs> yeah, Larry Shields, 3004 Gloucester Street. Um, last month I was here, we talked a little bit about um, uh, commercial, specifically tractor trailer traffic cutting through non-local on Centerville Road between Harrisburg Pike and Marietta Pike. And I understand there's going to be some follow-up on that. And uh, Mr. Wigglesworth, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask. You had mentioned uh, that there would be some follow-up and that you would let us know. And then I forgot, of course, to ask you how that notification would come. Sure. So we discussed it a little bit earlier uh, in the meeting. So what we're doing right now is getting a proposal from our traffic um, engineer on to study not just Centerville Road, but the main roads that go north and south right. through the township for truck traffic. Um, and then if my understanding is correct, uh, Ms. Schweitzer, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, once we do an official study, because right now the way the, the posting is, it's unenforceable, is that correct? that we cannot enforce because an official traffic study has not been completed. We cannot enforce and okay. in, during that stretch of roadway, we cannot give the enforcement that you're looking for. Um, the, the violations would not be, um, it would not be done in a legal manner. So right now, what we're like, we were trying to do is take a comprehensive look at everything that's going north and south because Centerville Road's not the only road we're getting these complaints right. on, um, you know, Stony Battery, uh, as well as another big one that we're, we're starting to uh, um, get some of these truck traffic complaints for north of um, Nolt Road. So um, I would say right now we're looking, you're supposed to hear back from the traffic engineer next, next week, week with a cost with a, proposal. With a cost proposal. Has to go to the board, which would be in July. He does his study, I would say, oh, September. Yeah. I, back to the board with his recommendations. So I think probably we're looking like September. Okay. Um, so would that be, is that open to the public? That is, is it, would the format be the traffic meetings or? Sure. Will we discuss both at the traffic commission meetings and also at the board of supervisor okay. meetings as well um, for the, uh, to accept the proposal to move forward. Um, we can make you aware, we've got your email, right? And you've signed in, I know you've yeah, corresponded. Month, um, but, but it's always difficult to do that. Okay. Uh, I, I would strongly suggest you just watch the agendas when they get okay. posted. Okay. okay. I mean, okay, we, could, we could definitely try, but if I wouldn't, yeah, all, I your, that. all your um, stones are in the same so bucket. The best way is to just follow watch the, the agendas. agenda. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking September-ish. 
Yes. Well, the, we're thinking September-ish, the study should be completed. Right. We'll be right. discussing the proposal. I don't think it'll be a, a, a big controversial issue at the next Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, oh, okay. You know, just to authorize, yes, to authorize the study to take place after we get the proposal back from the engineer. Okay, good. And then last month's traffic meeting minutes, is that on the website? I couldn't find it tonight. Last month's would not be, it will be after it's approved, oh. which was tonight. Okay, got it, thank you. Any comments online? No, any, ma'am? Clay Hardy, <clears throat> Stony Battery Road, um, which is, I understand, a nightmare for you, but you should try living there. Um, the traffic right now is not quite as bad because school's out, but the speeding is unconscionable. Some, something has to be done, has to be done. And I mean, I, I hear all these others and I see all these reports that you have and I know your hands are full, but. What, what block specifically are you? 750, right across from the new warehouse. Okay. It is apparently none of my business because my side of the street is west, but I'm both places because you guys have to do something. I think we did do traffic studies. I, offhand, I we don't did. remember what they resulted. They said, uh, one, the one time the former chief said that they had a thing up for like four hours in front of my house. I'm sorry, I, don't, I must have been on another planet that day. But four hours is nothing. No, we do traffic studies for a week. Yeah. Mm, well. We put the, 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 the tubes, I think, it, no, they're not tubes. It's radar. Radar. Boxes. So. I don't know. And they're out they for a week. around that corner up at QVC and they hammer it. And uh, I mean, in fact, you we can did, hear them. We did two traffic studies, one in that neighborhood and then one further down. Um, uh, they are on the website, by the way, the traffic study results. Um, hmm. So and we're also scheduled for some improvements there, right? We're, the walking path is... Walking path is hopefully gonna be done late the fall, in the fall. Um, we also are going to be resurfacing it. You'll see um, public works out there this year uh, doing some base improvements and then the uh, paving will occur next year. Okay. Oh, that was another question I had when, what the timeline was on that. At least because we yeah. were told it was going to be widened. Is it going to be widened? The last thing we need is improvements to make the traffic worse. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, I know it needs it's gonna to be, be done, widened but... and technically it's going to be smoother because of the resurfacing so they can go faster uh, that's tends to be an off, offset yes so i'm telling you that mile between qvc and the church has is a racetrack i kid you not i'm surprised somebody hasn't been killed there already i mean we've had people have accidents that they ran into telephone poles and stuff and then they just backed up and went away yeah, our, I don't think our traffic study had that result. Well, of course it didn't, because you were only there for a minute. No, we were there for a week. I'm pulling it up right now, if you give me one. Uh, we can... 16th of December, 21, Jen. Yeah. It was the week of November 12th through the 19th. I still don't see how that could have been any place close to where we live, and we didn't see it. So we're in and out of there every day. 1100 block of Stony Battery Road. Okay, see, that's way far away. Well, there's another one as well. That's clear up um, into Landisville, close to um, that's the one that's on the um, Kaufman Road. Well, why don't we put it in the queue? And we'll see. There's only one listed there. I just swore we did more than one. So we can put another chief, we can put it back Absolutely. in the queue. It might take what, a couple months now? We can get it up within the month. Okay. So you bet. She wouldn't like it. You better adjourn. <laughs> 
Do we have um, any other comments from the audience or Zoom? Okay. All right, hearing none, we will adjourn the traffic commission meeting. The board of supervisors will be meeting here at seven o'clock. Thank you. Yeah. We have four northbound, southbound, Stony Battery, Centerville, Georgetown, and Hood. Mm -hmm. We have Harrisburg Pike, Marietta, and Columbia. Those are the direction of the roads to collectors. Everything else is a cul-de-sac off of them. Close. These counters are getting a real workout, huh? That's the only solution. Absolutely are. Which is good.